Warner Bros' attempt to build a big, interconnected DC movie universe hasn't gone fully to plan. Until this year's Wonder Woman, they'd failed to perform to expectations at the box office, been mauled by critics, and while Warners have peddled the For The Fans line, a debate that is becoming increasingly absurd, it's been difficult as a fan to see what exactly it is they're offering. If DC wanted to look at how to successfully create a live-action universe, they don't even need to look at the MCU. They just need to glance at their TV shows. Since 2012, the CW has been creating its Arrowverse, starting with Arrow, and has gradually incorporated The Flash, Legends of Tomorrow, and Supergirl. The shows all share a world, crossover, and are enjoying a fair bit of success. I'm Ben from What Culture, and here are nine reasons DC TV shows are better than the movies. Number nine doing more with less. It should all be so easy for DC on the big screen. They've got the money to spend, the audience ready for it, and some of the biggest names in comics history. The TV shows don't really have that luxury. Yeah, they've gotten away with The Flash and had Superman appear in Supergirl for a few episodes, but that's about it. With that in mind, it becomes even more impressive how much they've achieved. Arrow started it all, using a character many were skeptical about having a TV series, but they managed to turn it into one of the finest comic book properties on TV, dark without being depressing, and full of some incredible action and compelling storylines. Number 8. The crossovers are great fun. Although Arrow was doing just fine on his own, everything changed when they introduced Barry Allen in Season 2. Just a few months later, he was getting his own series, and immediately, the two were crossing over. The idea of heroes coming together is a big part of what such universes are sold on, and all these series were delivering. Arrow and Flash having a friendly rivalry, but then teaming up to take down bad guys. Flash and Supergirl teaming up for a musical. They're a chance to cut loose, do something a bit different, and a hugely enjoyable. Contrast that to the movies, where in Batman v Superman you have a USB file containing some random footage of a few of the heroes, or the Flash briefly popping up in Suicide Squad, and it's easy to see which has done it better. Number 7. Better Villains One of the many problems with Suicide Squad was just how poor the villains were. Incubus was just a big, sloppy CGI mess. It's a follow-on from Batman v Superman, which had a bland take on Doomsday and Jesse Eisenberg's woeful attempt at Lex Luthor. The CW shows have made mistakes in this regard, too. Vandal Savage, once put into a full series rather than crossover events, was incredibly dull, and The Flash has had one speedster big bad too many. However, they've also created some of the best on-screen villains of the last few years, Reverse Flash and Deathstroke. They they were clear in their motivations, compelling in their performances, and pushed the heroes to the limit, always feeling like a legitimate threat. Number 6. They've nailed the casting in terms of casting, it's been a bit of a mixed bag for the DC Extended Universe. Ben Affleck could be a great Batman with the right material, but might soon be leaving the role, and Gal Gadot is one of the best things about the DCEU. But on the flip side, Henry Cavill's not a great Superman, and Jesse Eisenberg's a mess as Luther. Now, obviously, the CW and CBS can't quite attract the same profile of actor, but they've done a superb job of choosing their heroes. Arrow owes a large amount of success to Stephen Amell, bringing not just the physicality, but also depth to a character who could have just been a playboy. Boy. Grant Gustin was perfect for Barry Allen and has nailed everything asked of him, and Melissa Benoist was an immediate beacon of hope and light as Supergirl, and gives an effortlessly charming performance that is just fun to watch. Number 5. Time to tell the stories. Batman v Superman is two and a half hours and three if you get the Ultimate Edition, which is incredibly long for a movie, and in that time it's not only supposed to tell a compelling story about Batman fighting Superman, but then divert into setting up the Justice League, but it becomes overstuffed and progressions to the next point are forced. On TV, they have far too much time to tell the stories, if anything. There's often a fair bit of filler in these shows, but it's still better than what we're getting over the course of the movies. Things can be set up and teased, characters can develop, plots are given room to breathe. The TV shows are making the most of when it comes to spinning their stories, while the films can feel bloated, rushed, and dull. Number 4. They can deliver on spectacle. If TV has the advantage of time to tell its stories, then film certainly has the upper hand when it comes to spectacle. The budget for these movies is bigger than the TV series will get for an entire season and should look amazing. The CW shows, for the most part, deliver surprisingly well in the spectacle front row. The best example is The Flash, which shocked everyone when it realized Gorilla Grodd on screen to great effect, and then not only repeated the trick in season two, but topped it with King Shark. The same can't quite be said for the movies. Wonder Woman's No Man's Land is a stunning sequence, but the ending of Man of Steel results in big, near-endless destruction porn, and there's an endless stream of CGI creatures flying around in Suicide Squad. Number 3. More Emotional Heft 
When watching some of DC's films, it can be a little hard to care too much about the characters. There aren't often too many emotional beats in superhero movies anyway, but what attempts there have been have been rather mishandled. Joker is a love interest, the entire bloody Martha scene. They succeeded on this front with Wonder Woman, largely thanks to Diana and Steve's relationship, but that's the only movie to achieve it so far. The TV shows have made a couple of missteps themselves in this area, in particularly that one death in season four of Arrow, but at times they've absolutely nailed it. Tommy Merlin's death in season one, almost any scene involving Barry and his dad, and best of all, the season one finale when Barry goes back to save his mother and then decides not to. Number two, they know how to use humor. Man of Steel and Batman v Superman both come off as joyless affairs. There's nothing wrong with having a dark, gritty superhero film, but they hit upon one depressing shade of gray and stuck with it. Suicide Squad should have changed that. It looked like it would, but sadly, it didn't. What humor there was was forced and fell flat, and the whole thing was just rather dull and dour. Again, though, it's a problem that the TV series have had, with seasons three and four of Arrow being a bit miserable. For the most part, though, they've managed to balance the light and the dark very well. Arrow was the darker show, but it was propelled by its actions and high stakes, providing thrills and making it exciting to watch. The Flash, Legends, and Supergirl went the other way, full of heart and humor. They were fun, fast, and funny, but also able to take more serious turns when the story required. Number one. The universe is well established. Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice had just one big purpose, to kickstart the DCEU. It ended up a bloated mess, and even with the Justice League now out, the shared universe aspect is there, but it isn't really much better off having succumbed to a poor critical reception. For the TV shows, however, everything is there, and it largely started quite naturally. Barry Allen was just briefly introduced in Arrow and then had his own great show, and all of a sudden you've got a burgeoning shared universe on TV. Bringing Supergirl into this world took almost no effort either, thanks to the multiverse, and the universe is very firmly established and ready to keep on expanding as they see fit, while the DCEU is still struggling to properly get going. And that's our list. Make sure you subscribe to the What Culture YouTube channel for more lists like this, and don't forget to visit whatculture.com for daily news and articles. I'm Ben from What Culture, and thanks for watching. <laughs> oh, 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 wasn't that something? Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe below, and also the people who made this lovely video, they're appearing right here. But if you're thinking to yourself, I want to see more content, Jules, then why not look above my head, as there probably is some. I don't know. I can't see it. Until next time.